Welcome back to a Little Faith. I'm very excited today to talk to one of my very best friends, Sarah Schlageter. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm good. I have a, I have, on the notes it says to, for you to give a quick bio, is what I said. <laughs> Just funny. So who are you, Sarah? Um, yeah, my name is Sarah Schlageter. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York near the Finger Lakes Ecclesia. Um, I lived in Richmond, Virginia, and I went to the Chapel Ecclesia for 10 years. And last August, um, I got a midwifery job in upstate New York, so I moved back home um, and have been working as a midwife since the end of August. That was my, this is my first midwifery job. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was a nurse for like 10 years before I became a midwife. And yeah, you made the switch to being a midwife. I know that, just full disclosure, I guess, for the audience <laughs> very intimately. Because uh, you were at the birth of my daughter, Pippa. So yep. thank you again. Yeah, thank no you again problem. for doing that <laughs> almost two years ago. Um, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. Um, but I think you have an interesting perspective now at this time, you know, with everything changed uh, with COVID-19. Um, and I really want, I want to hear about kind of your job and then how it has changed. So can you talk about what what was your normal kind of day week like like what were some of the normal things that you did at the medical center uh the birth center or whatever you work at actually yeah <laughs> shows you what I know <laughs> what, what was your normal week like before the virus before um so I was actually thinking about this um my my job has a really long orientation for new midwives which is really great um so I actually that makes sense yeah so I actually came off orientation um like the beginning of March. <laughs> so I uh-huh. was, I had about two weeks of working by myself before we started changing the way we work because of COVID-19. Um, so it's kind of interesting, but I was obviously working just at, with another midwife, but before I would have, um, two days in the office seeing people for, um, obstetric care and gynecological care. Um, so that's like pre-birth kind of meetings mm-hmm. yeah and like women's health um okay birth control um right that kind of thing um annual exams um and then i did two 12-hour shifts um a week um at the hospital catching babies okay yeah cool um and so the hospital and your office are those two different places that you go to obviously they yes they are separate but the ho- the office is actually attached to the hospital um so it's one of those i don't know like lots of hospitals are like that where they have a medical office building that's attached right. to the hospital so one of the offices in in one of the buildings is um the women's center and then is it just normal like like what people are imagining just like scrubs i guess in both places or what what do you, what do you actually get dressed in because i think that's obviously changed i guess is what i'm pointing at yeah um I, in the office, I would just wear, like, business casual clothes. Okay. Um, and on labor and delivery, we wear hospital-provided scrubs. hmm So, um, now we have, I still wear business casual clothes to the office, um, but I wear a, a paper surgical mask and a face shield. So the paper paper surgical mask I wear from the time I walk in the office to when I, like, am leaving, I usually take it off between the office and the car. Right. Um, yeah. And and then I add a face shield, um, every time I go in to see a patient in one of the exam rooms. Okay. Wow. Um. So that's, that's in the office. Yeah. And then the same thing at the, at the hospital. Uh. Yes. Um. Except that the face shield. So in the office, the face shield kind of comes to just the edge of your face. In, in the, in the on labor and delivery, the face shield that we wear comes all the way around behind your ears and yeah. like has an angle from your chin down towards your neck. Um, so it prevents from like splashing, I guess, basically in your ears or like up wow. from the bottom. It's all see-through. I, mean, I guess, you know, we're painting a picture, I guess, because we don't have, nobody can see anything in, right. on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but it's, so it's like a see-through cylinder almost around your head. It's pretty yeah. striking. 
you sent Jess and I a picture. It's very striking. Yeah, it was it was weird the first time I put it on. It felt very strange. Um, and, like, my, like, anxiety definitely um, spiked when I, like, got this per- personal protective equipment that we're supposed to wear. Because um, it just felt like, okay, this is, like, really real now. Um, and also I wondered how I was going to be able to, like, take care of my patients, especially with the big face shield on. Well, that's what um, I think about. I mean, as a as a parent who's been through this, you know, just the one time, just having having the people in the room during your labor wearing, you know, equipment like that is not comforting. Yeah. yeah. Or a hindrance. It's a hindrance to comforting, to be yeah. comforting. <laughs> it's definitely a hindrance. <laughs> um, and, you know, just even... So the big thing with the face shield on labor and delivery is that it really... Um, diminishes your hearing and oh. your ability to speak to people. So I have to like, like shout <laughs> um, yeah. to be heard, and it's it's really difficult to hear. And with the addition of the face mask, especially with um, like communicating with like the nurses that I work with, that's much more challenging because I can't like even see that you're um, speaking to know right. that they should be hearing you. And they also right. have a face shield on, so you're trying to speak through two plastic helmets, essentially. Yeah, that's difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, yeah. Have, I, you, have, you, have you changed how you speak to the patients, I guess both in the office and then also on the, labor, on the floor, on the hospital floor? Um, in the office, not so much, except that I do, not always, but I do ask people... Um, like how they're feeling, like sort of referencing um, the virus. Um, And I also talk to women who are close to their due dates. We talk to them about how things are different on labor and delivery um, and what what things they need to know about when they're coming in for for their birth. Um, on, On labor and delivery... Like, I, I mean, you saw me in a birth. <laughs> I do a lot of, yeah. like, quiet, like, like whispering almost. Like, very, like, low encouragement because um, being loud adds stress to the situation. Um, sometimes I have to speak firmly, right. but even then I try to keep my volume as low as I can. And now I can't do that. I have to, If I want to, like, say, like, good job, take a deep breath, I have to speak it loudly enough. For the mom to hear me, <laughs> which is a lot louder than I normally speak in a right. Room. So, but oh, I guess I never I never answered that. Um, now the big change in my job is that I, um, since the virus sort of hit Rochester area, um, I work from home one day a week now doing telephone and telehealth okay. video visits. So that's a new weird thing that I do. And that's, that's also got to be more difficult to connect with people. Again, I feel like so much of what you do is, yes, medical, but, like, very interpersonal. Yeah, yeah, it is weird um, trying to connect with people. And also, especially just um, a lot of medical care involves, like, putting your hands on people um, in various right. ways. And I can't do that, obviously, over a video or a phone call. And sometimes that right. doesn't matter, but... And I can still do the job I need to do, but sometimes it's not as easy, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on labor and delivery, it's, it's, I'm finding it hard to, like, comfort people in the same way. And I also find, like, when I have this big helmet on, I don't know, it's, I feel removed from the situation in a weird way. I don't mm. know. I've done three births since I started, or wait, no, I think it's four now. I had a birth yesterday. Um... Uh, I've done four births with um, an N95 mask Mm -hmm. um, and the the big plastic helmet thing on Um, and it just feels like I'm not in in the moment or in the situation as much as I usually am interesting it's weird like it's more technical I guess I don't know like you're just responding to you're just giving the right answers almost instead of like feeling out the situation yeah, and that makes sense. yeah, and even just weird stuff like I just I don't know like usually, um, 
I put like a plastic drape under a woman before she gives birth, and I just like didn't think to do that the other day, and it just makes oh, no. everything messier. It's not like a big deal, but I was like, why didn't I do that? I just it's because I was just not like in the zone as much as I am, I guess. Yeah. Usually, it's do you, weird. <laughs> do you feel a different anxiety from your patients in this time? Um. It varies from patient to patient. Mm-hmm. Some of them, I think, are more anxious. Um, so the big difference on labor and delivery is now that, is now that all, all our patients are limited to um, one support person with them. Mm. Um, so what's the what's the usual? It's the father of the baby usually. Um, oh, okay. So I'm saying, but what's the oh, rule before? Yeah. Um, before that, it was. Like, you could have whoever you want in there. I think technically we had a limit of three visitors in the room at once, but it was... Okay. I don't think I ever saw it enforced unless someone was being a problem. Like, right. a, a visitor was being a problem, we might use that as the reason. Um, but it was never enforced. Um, and now they, can, now they can only have one. Right. So that, essentially, the big thing that that means is that there's no, there's no like, sisters and there's no, like, moms oh, interesting. of the right. laboring... Um, patient man yeah um, and I do think at least in at least one of the births that I've had um, I think that if her mom had been there she would have felt a lot more supported and more comforted and I know that was her plan originally and she was mm. facetiming with her mom even like immediately after the birth and stuff and oh wow her mom was a lot more comforting than her partner was during the, yeah. the birth <laughs> which happens a, nice, yeah that happens. <laughs> nice way to say, nice way to say that um <laughs> Yeah, you know, and thinking about this, just, you know, when I, when Jess and I went through our birth, we had so much, there's so much in this day that you, or at least we did, we try to imagine and try to build a picture of what it's going to be like, you know, for a year, for the year before, essentially, you know, Mm -hmm. and then this would be such, like many things, such a hardship for those mothers to then get here and well now it's different. I can't have the people I want, all the people I want with me. The nurses are all wearing you know, big masks on their face. It's like, it'd be a very different experience. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad trying to connect with people just like using my eyeballs, you know, and even your coworkers, like you're trying, sometimes it's hard to recognize people because all you can see is their eyes. I don't know. It's strange. Yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. (laughs) How, so let's talk about, go ahead. I was just going to add that I've had a few patients um, ask about home birth options in the area because they just don't want to go to the hospital right now, too. Mm, so. That's seen seen an increase in that. That makes sense. Yeah, that would definitely be on my mind too. So how has this? Uh, what has this been like for your for your faith? I guess professionally. So I, in a way, I was thinking about it actually is like your your prayers. Like, what are some things that have added into your prayers? Um, because this happens so close to when I started like working independently a lot of it's the same like I I just want to remain calm no matter what the situation is um which is true regardless of any pandemics going on (laughs) that's true yeah yeah. it's a good prayer (laughs) good prayer no matter what yeah um so that was something I've thought a lot about um just since I over the last like two months um Mm -hmm as I've come up orientation, I've been practicing by myself. Um, so I guess it's just like more calm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause you, you, you're dealing with more yeah. inside, inside and outside. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of meetings, um, uh, that are specifically related to, related to the virus in, in my office. We often have meetings first thing in the morning, like we call them huddles. And then, mm-hmm. Every day, Monday through Friday at 5.30, we have an update with the um, department head of obstetrics. Um, and I find those meetings very stressful. So mm. <laughs> it's been just hearing, like, the things we need to expect to happen, especially, like, two weeks ago when they were talking about, you know, we expect a really big influx of patients in the next couple of weeks and talking about trying to... Um, just mitigate risks to staff and patients. Um, I tried to always be going for a walk when I was on those calls because it just, Mm. otherwise it was just, and yeah, it was just too much. 
So I would take my dog Pepper for a walk in the wetlands near my house. <laughs> um, well, and that I mean, is yeah, always centering, obviously. Yes, yeah, that helps. Um, I'm just I just look, pulled up the um, the the cases in that county, Monroe, New York. I guess is the 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 medical center is in that is in the Rochester or near Rochester, Monroe County. Yeah, that's where Rochester is. Mm-hmm. There's like nearly a thousand cases. It's it's a uh, over a percentage point of people of for one percent of people. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. What about um, what are some fears kind of that you're still struggling with or like it pers- like it's personally and professionally? Um, well, it, so I get, it's more personal, I guess, but, and you and I have talked about this already. Mm-hmm. Um, so I moved in August. Um, I, I don't have any friends here <laughs> yeah. and it just feels like I'm never going to see anyone ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a nephew who's 13 months old who I last saw in January. Um, mm-hmm. And I had a trip planned that got canceled by the snow in February. Right. And then um, everything's canceled now. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely been a different thing. Like we, we've, been, we've been talking about that. Like you said, it's just what, what is the next item on our calendar that is going to hold? Right. Oof. You know, <laughs> is, it July, is it July? Is it August? Is it September? You know, when, when can we make a plan? <laughs> Yeah. When can you make a plan that will hold? Yeah. And it's hard when, um, uh, when you're close with little kids because they change so fast. And if you don't see mm-hmm. them, like you don't get that time back with them. Right. That's very true. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's the, the, uh, well, it's, it, like, any, like anything, it's the, it's the, un- it's the, it's the not knowing, you know, if you knew that it was August 1st or June 1st, you know, or yeah, January 1st of 21, you know, it would be very, we'd be able to handle it differently. Um, but have you felt in your own faith, have you felt closer or further away from God or uh, like up or down or, um, through this? Well, like one thing that I have found, um, uplifting is, uh, like going to zoom church. <laughs> mm. I actually really like it cause I've been going to schoolies mountain um, which is where uh, my sister Maggie goes and Jose, my brother-in-law. Um, and I find uh, their services really, just like really warm and welcoming and nice. Mm. So I'm like a, a temporary member of Schoolies Mountain <laughs> mm. right now over mm-hmm. Zoom. <laughs> right. Which is nice. And just seeing, um, I mean, my I think my relationship with God is very much... Um, uh, I don't know like tied with is I'm not sure if that's the right way to describe it but um it's it's interwoven with my relationship with other people for sure it, mm-hmm. both in our community and without but I guess primarily mm-hmm. within our community so it is nice to be be able to connect with other people um in other areas visually which you know zoom church is not a thing I normally did <laughs> right no no yeah, I was telling, I think just this last Sunday, you know, it's been, I guess we've been, actually, we actually went to church on the 15th, March 15th, which we shouldn't have. Many, many churches had closed, but not kind of our ecclesias. So I guess, let me see, that was, so we've had four at home, four Sundays at home. And uh, it was just this last one that for me that actually felt like church in a way, like I've yeah. been uplifted. I think because for just for me, you know, and I felt like a, a service um i've been doing different things like i actually you know, spoke at one in it's funny i even spoke at one at a, at, in a meeting before that but that is always a very different sunday you know you don't really take the time when you're presenting i don't take the time when i'm presenting to really try to connect mm-hmm. um so I've, I've felt the same thing that i think it's like we've made this transition now to these digital churches that is like i think it's taking that makes sense or it's like working for people now at least for me mm-hmm. after a few um, weeks after a few weeks because the first one the first couple are just so jarring and we're, and again hoping that will this be over soon you know it's like and getting everyone had to learn to mute themselves it was a whole learning curve for everyone <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true yeah so people still haven't but you know <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah so i guess in in your 
in your labors, in your, in your, uh, you know, your midwife work, it's, I guess you, 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 you kind of never established a normal, you know, for you. No, like not a, really. to then, to then, to then feel disrupted, you know, you kind of just feel this is another, this is a, just a difficult thing, but you're, you're still getting your feet under you anyways. Yeah, more or less, especially, at least at this, you know, in this job. Um, right. It is weird when you're learning to be a midwife. At some point, you do, like, sort of have a practice of your own, but I, who knows when that point happened. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. was it when I was in school? Was it at Pippa's birth? Who knows? <laughs> right, right. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. That's that's what, um, <laughs> that's, that's, can be repeated. It is a yep. very strange time. It's true. Um, have you, have you had any other feelings of, I guess, connection, uh, from like, you know, do, do you, do you kind of feel God or feel your faith, um, growing or, or waning, I guess, at different times? You talked about loneliness and then now you talked about kind of the, the, com- the online community, but... Is there any other things that have affected you? Um, I mean, in my job, there's, if, like, if I take the time to think about birth, um, I always feel a connection to God, for sure. Um, Mm. it's just, like, it is a miracle to watch a baby be born, like, Mm. (laughs) every time. Um, and it's not always something that I actively think about, because I am, thinking about other things as well in that moment but um yeah it's it doesn't make any sense (laughs) and then a baby's born like it just is incredible (laughs) um and um just seeing the strength of relationships within a family um or the lack of relationships within a family and the strength within um women that have babies is incredible Mm -hmm. no matter how they do it that's amazing and that is really um, uh, that, that all comes from God for sure. So just that kind of being repeated in your, in your life is still powerful. Like you said, you you said you're at, you said you were at a birth yesterday. Yeah. Um, I was on labor and delivery yesterday from 8am to 8pm and a woman came in, it was her second baby. Um, and she came in like, uh, maybe like nine, nine a.m. or something, nine thirty. Um, and I could tell she was having like pretty intense contractions. She was four centimeters dilated, which, um, her doctor had checked her when she was in the office last week. And so, and she was four centimeters then, but I could tell that she, so usually to admit somebody, you look for a change in their cervix to indicate that mm-hmm. it's like a real labor, but she, um, she came in and she wanted some IV pain medicine to help with the, um, contractions. So she got that right away. And then. I'm, I was like charting and in one Mm -hmm. of the call rooms and then I got a call that she was, well, first I got a call, like you have to go to 460 and I was like, okay. And then immediately after that, I got a call on my, like someone called the call room phone and then someone immediately after that called the cell phone and she said, she had, they had a baby in 460. So I go running, I was like, what? Okay. So I go running in there and she hadn't had her baby yet, but, um, she just, uh, she was fully dilated, and um, in one push, she had this baby, like literally. Oh, wow. it, it was one push, <laughs> um, which is not normal. <laughs> um, so and it was, yeah, and it was okay. Yep, this is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's unpredictable and uh, it's surprising, and it's still going on no matter what's going on in the world. There's always babies being born and. Mm-hmm. So to keep keep doing my job, um, and she was, uh, I think she surprised herself. I think, and it was, yeah, it was a really nice birth. I remember we talked about this when when Pippa was born that, uh, you know, two years ago that there, that lesson it, it is biblical, like you know how how the, re- the return of Jesus is ta- is referred to as a woman in labor, uh, or the time before the return of Jesus is referred to that, and because. Uh, like you're saying, even in that story, just like you can never science, you know, cannot tell you exactly when this is going to happen. You know, like you, you, there is a, there is a time like you, you know, then we get a time like that. My baby, my daughter was born at six twenty eight AM. Like we knew that we knew that exactly when it happened, just like there is a time exactly when it will happen that Jesus returns. 
but no one can tell you that exact time until it has happened. It's kind of very very powerful about birth, like you're saying. Like you 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 can see the signs, you know, that this lady will have a baby. That's for sure. Right, and at some point, like, um, I mean, I guess if you like further that analogy, thinking about when, like, when do you become parents? Like in mm. it was, I don't think it was six twenty eight, like a.m. that day. I don't, you know, Jess was a mom before that, but when it's all mysterious and. You know, oh, when, interesting. When is the earth ready? Like, we don't know. That's interesting. Or when are we, mem- you know, when are we members of the kingdom of God? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's that, but then, <laughs> that's beautiful. I guess, yeah, we are stretching the analogy, but I do. But yeah, it's... A, I like that, it. That, that, <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. And that time, <laughs> and that, and that timing, I like, like you're saying, it's like, that timing is inexact. It's, it's impossible to tell. Like, in that story... And then other ones, it's the other way around. You know, it's like you 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 could tell better, but there's all these signs that the baby's coming soon, and then there may be another twenty hours or something. You know. Yeah, yeah. After that. So. Yeah, and you never know when in a woman's pregnancy she's gonna give birth. Like not even like even before labor starts, there's. You know, even for like a normal birth, like that's considered full term. There's a range of like five weeks that's considered. Right. You know. Right. That's yeah. a big difference when you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is a huge difference. Uh, I remember looking this up. I'm, I'm Googling it right now. Percentage of time a baby is born on due date. Oh, it's like it's like 5%. Exactly, 5%. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe that it's like... And then I think it's spread... I saw... Um, I, I should have prepared this ahead of time, but I saw... Um, a scale when again when we were when we were going through our pregnancy of like it's five percent on the due date and it's like four percent the day after and four percent the day after and three percent the day after and like it's like it's like a hundred percent is cut up over five weeks of days right you know so you you, you essentially have like between a one and five percent chance of having a baby every day for five weeks in a row it's right. kind of like a, you know it's just like <laughs> it's, it's so impossible to make plans yeah yeah so just like now <laughs> Yeah, totally. Just like I realized, I said that out loud. It's like we can't. Yeah, we don't know when this uh, when this will be over, and yeah. then, uh, we can make plans um, again. When I'm talking to women about their due date, sometimes I tell them that um, your due date is almost always. Um, uh, oh, what's the word I say? Um, well, it's always. I can't remember what word I say, but I always like I do say that it's almost always. Um, like not exciting it's always just another day because either mm. you have a newborn and you're just like like I gotta take care of this baby or you're just pregnant and then you're just you know doing your life so it's just right weird. that's funny yeah unless they're born on the due date then right. it's just a then it's a completely forgettable fact after the fact right it's weird. right that's funny that's interesting well uh, yeah thank you Sarah this has been really great um I really appreciate the time talking with you and yeah. These are definitely, like you said, weird times, but I think they really have a strong effect on us, uh, faith-wise. Yep, it's true. And someday it'll be the past. Someday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Someday it will be uh, something we just like the due date. It'll be forgotten in a way. 